Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. It means a lot to know I'm bringing you all some entertainment. I really like this series and enjoy making these videos. But without further ado, let's dive into part two of the SSS Class Hunter. We pick up the story after the main character had been killed by the Flame Emperor and he's wondering what happened. He's confused as to when he got back to his house. Looking at his phone, he sees the social media thread from the day before as we see the Flame Emperor on the news complaining about his name from the day before. Panicking, our hero is wondering why everything is saying the same thing as yesterday. He begins to have a flashback to the Flame Emperor's smiling face as he kills him. We then see where his hand reached out to grab a hold card, stretching his arm out fully. He says, skill cards open as we see two gold skill cards appear before him, roasting his own skill, calling it the most trash skill of the century, even though it's not looking shocked at what skill the Flame Emperor had, which is the Returner's Winding Clock. And it's EX level, and the way the skill works is it sends you back 24 hours after you die while dropping your rank, and you can keep your memories and experience. Which is insane. Shocked at his newfound skill, and surprised that it sends him back 24 hours after he dies. With the added bonus of remembering everything that happened after it's definitely a cheat skill. Our hero pieces together how the Flame Emperor knew the Saintess was going to try to poison him that night, where he killed her, and is mad that he still killed him even though he was innocent. We then hear the newscaster ask for a last word from the Emperor before they end the interview. We hear the Emperor say the same thing as the day before. Don't start beef with me even if you succeed. You will die, our hero questioningly asks. Die. He closes his skill card in his fist, saying let's see who is the one to die this time. Suddenly his attention is drawn to someone shouting fire. More people scream out what do we do as our hero looks out the window to see a burning building. Grabbing his knife he heads out the door to see a line of people headed to the fire to help put it out. Peeping around the corner we learn that Babylon is not a normal city. It is a city built by hunters. We see the floor one tower burning in a giant wall of flames. Running with the crowd our heroes asks what time is it? It is 6.37, right around the time our hero was getting drunk. He concludes that he started the fire to cover up the fact that the Emperor murdered the Saintess. A crowd of people are staring at the fire as water hunters are trying to coordinate to put it out. The Black Dragon leader is shouting orders to people as their guild takes the lead in the firefighting. We then see a nerdy green-haired girl saying, We should send in a rescue squad. Like, why don't you all have a fire department? The paladin in his shiny armor is saying that the place has been empty for years, so they lucked out. A crowd of people are trying to help put out the fire. Our hero is staring at the flames like he's in an edit. Mans thinks some funk music is about to start playing. He is wondering where the saintess is, since she is normally first on the scene in emergency situations. The paladin and nerdy girl are discussing whether or not the saintess and flame emperor are busting it down, since they've been seen together a lot lately. The green-haired Walgreens pharmacist says that she doesn't like the Flame Emperor and that he gives her the creeps. We see a familiar red jacket cutting through the crowd saying, God damn. As the little rat appears in the crowd yapping about who played with fire without my permission. Our hero is rightfully pissed off at the sight of him clenching his teeth in fury. The paladin starts simping for the Emperor by saying thanks for coming. He then starts giving the Emperor the rundown on the situation but this greedy bastard is only worried about what type of reward he'll be getting for helping. Our hero clenches his hand around his knife, with veins pulsing out of his hand. He hates the fact that the psychopathic Flame Emperor is asking for a reward. The paladin tried to reason with the Flame Emperor, saying he gains the goodwill of the public and the egotistical. Pretty Boy says he doesn't care about what they think of him. He's basically every heartthrob TikToker looks good on the outside, but the inside is rotten. The Emperor proceeds to turn around and leave saying he doesn't do charity work. Our hero is giving him the death stare. Thinking no one knows who he really is, the people just think he's some eccentric hunter. But he's the only one who knows he's nothing more than a cold-blooded killer. With a super serious expression, he calmly thinks, I need to kill him. He heads toward the fire scene as some rando asks where he's going like mind your business. For humanity and the honor of hunters. Hunters are people who are supposed to hunt monsters walking menacingly towards the Flame Emperor with his dagger in hand, regardless of the method as his foot is shown stomping the ground. The Emperor gives him that bombastic side-eye, while the onlookers call out to our hero saying, get your head on straight. 
He starts sprinting towards the Flame Emperor as if he's about to attack. He reaches out his hand, saying that the monster should be exterminated. Our boy said Psyche got your neck and runs straight towards the fire like some suicidal Hot Topic employee. He screams out in pain as he's being burned alive, which is honestly badass. The crowd of onlookers watch in horror as our hero comments, It's hot like no shit, Sherlock. Still being burned, we see him bringing his hands up to his face. The Flame Emperor is looking down at the suicidal maniac with a look of disgust. As our hero says, this is the only way to kill this monster. A status window pops up saying you have died and you will return 24 hours to the past. Our hero opens his eyes as he has returned to his bed as the new station is playing on the TV. He sits up as he talks about the Black Dragon again. The skill is working properly. I mean, if it didn't, you wouldn't have woken up. The D rank doesn't affect him since he's already an F rank hunter. The skill window says there is no penalty for the skill usage. Our hero realizes that it would be impossible to kill the Flame Emperor at this time since he would just return 24 hours before he died, since they both possess the same skill. He also realizes that the only way for a F rank hunter like him to kill the Emperor. The story cuts to the Emperor being interviewed by Korean Ellen. She asks him when he first got his powers. He got them in the summer when he was 21, which was 11 years ago. She says you must have a good memory then. He basically says my memory is not good. It was just on my birthday, so I remember it. This gives our hero the information he needs to go back in time, 11 years on June 7th. He calculates that it would be 4,050 days. He raises the knife above his chest, prepared to die 4,050 times. Stabbing himself in the chest, he steadies his resolve to go back in time before the Flame Emperor awakens. A notification appears saying you have died. We then see him jolt awake in his bed, returning 24 hours ago. He immediately grabs the knife again, saying, Only 4,049 days left. He brings the knife up for a second time. Stairs window appears saying you have died. He then proceeds to repeat the process, as the status window says you have died again. He stabs himself again, his whole body shaking as he does so. He lets out a grunt of pain as blood starts coming from his mouth. We see him slumped over on his floor as it says, returning to 24 hours ago. More windows appear saying no penalty for using the skill. He has died again, and he's gripping his chest in pain. With the knife in his hand once again he says only 2,020 days left. Only 543 days left, he says finally. He then brings the knife up to his neck with a look of pure ecstasy and determination. He stabs himself in the gut for the last time as orange electricity crackles out of his back. With this being the last day he needs to do, the clock on the wall shows the time of two o'clock. Our hero is shown laying spread eagle in his bed with his dagger in his hands. He sits up and turns to look at the clock in the wall. He did it. As we see the newspaper articles on the wall, grabbing his knife for the thousandth time, he finally made it to the time before the flame. Emperor came to be a prick. Still can't believe he stabbed himself that many times he would be destroyed mentally doing that, that many times. Resting his head against the wall, he lets out an exhausted sigh. He actually ended up dying 30 more times than he wanted to. That's including the time it took to kill himself as we see him from the future, I guess, since he went to the past, but it's his past. Time travels weird anyways, he's having PTSD from that time the Flame Emperor killed, saying he took breaks from offing himself, gripping his knife like it's his chicken late at night. He says that he held on that entire time so he could show the legend that the devil isn't immortal. Then we see his feet, which look like a prime example of what's on feet finders, don't ask me how I know. He then walks out the front door, then pulls his hood up like he's an assassin. He then says, time to go find my first prey. Eleven years ago, May 6th at 11 a.m., our hero approaches an apartment complex. He creeps up to the window where a long-haired man is sleeping. We then see it's the Flame Emperor being awoken by his girl alarm with drool all down his face. He sits up and checks his phone complaining about his head hurting, then complains about his head hurting. The Emperor says I shouldn't have drunk that much last night with our hero saying it in sync with him. Turns out he's repeated this day ten times to formulate the perfect plan. As the Emperor gets dressed, our hero talks about his schedule. The Emperor wakes up every day at nine in the morning. The Emperor puts his staff on his shoulder and says it's time to go to work. The clock shows that it's three in the afternoon. The Emperor catches slimes in the second floor hunting ground as we see his bow staff impale one. He comments about how this is boring to do all day every day. 
He then gets angry and yells about when he will be able to live an awesome life like the Sword Saint. The 21-year-old hunter is just an average F-rank hunter wishing for his golden ticket. Yelling with a piece of the slime in his hand, he wishes he could win the lottery or get an S-rank skill. Normally his wishes would come true a week later. The slime tries to attack our suicidal hero. It gets slashed with some major precision. With a sinister look on his face, our hero says, that kind of future isn't coming to a guy like you anymore, as pieces of the slime fly everywhere from his knife stroke. He then begins rubbing pieces of the slime all over his hoodie. It's 5.31 p.m. Yu Su Ha tells the teleporter to take him to the sixth floor, which is a significantly higher level than slimes on floor two, but he thinks this will speed up his leveling process. Moving to floor six, for the next 36 minutes, he will be alone. As we see the shoe of our hero step out with the red goo on it from the slime, saying, Excuse me. Mr. Hunter, as the Flame Emperor turns back questioningly, we see our hero covered in red liquid asking for help and saying he got attacked by wolves and needs a potion. This angers the Emperor since it means he already messed with the wolves on this floor. He says now there's no reason to hunt on this floor now and our hero asks for a potion again. The Emperor questions what damn potion, but his main focus is on him not being able to meet his quota for the day. The Emperor decides to squeeze some money out of him, asking how much will you give me? Our hero questions what he means by this. The Emperor then pokes him with his stick while repeating the question. He then starts explaining how our hero ruined his hunt and now wants him to give him an expensive potion for free. Our hero stammers out that I'll give you twenty gold. The Emperor the quickly pulls the potions back saying you don't seem to understand the situation here. Poking the stick into his chest again while saying you're on death's door and need this potion and all you can offer is twenty gold. Is your life worth twenty gold? Our hero says he'll give him forty gold. With a malicious look on his face, he declines the offer. Grabbing our hero by the collar, he says, give me all you got thinking. He's some type of high school bully, asking for lunch money. The emperor starts to take out our hero's wallet, but we already knew he was this type of person. After grabbing the wallet, he throws our hero away from him towards the ground, like he's a piece of trash. He starts pouring out the gold while counting it, which was 60 gold pieces. He then roasts our boy saying, Man, why are you so broke? Get your money up, not your funny up. Our hero stammers out, That's my entire savings, as the emperor grabs his head like it's a basketball. Looking. Over our boy, he says, Don't worry, I'll spend it well. We then get a flashback scene from where the emperor killed our hero the first time. Our hero asks about the potion, but the emperor's spear starts glowing purple. He says I've thought about it a bit as he grasps his spear like he's about to attack. Our boy has an unamused face since he's been expecting this all along as the Emperor monologues about how he needs to end him so he can live without worries. Our boy questioningly says worries. While pulling his spear over his shoulder with a malicious look on his face, he screams out, Why don't you die for me? Our boy hits him with the most unemotional okay I've ever seen. He gets incredibly low to the ground while a blue and white aura starts surrounding him. He knees the emperor in his baby makers, while saying I'll live life without worries. This causes the emperor to buckle while our boy draws his knife. He then slashes at his opponent across the chest. We see his face in shock as blood starts gushing from his mouth. Blood starts spurting everywhere as our hero is breathing heavily. He then rushes toward the emperor about how he needed to prevent the emperor's one in a million chance of awakening. Bringing his dagger down with two hands, he's making sure the Emperor's getting a proper send-off. The knife impales the target. Blood covers the ground, but with a sigh of relief, it's finally been done. He starts talking to the corpse, saying killing me is whatever. But there was something weird that bothers him. He was confused as to why the Emperor gave him his name. He now realizes why, though, at this moment. The Emperor gave his name to make it seem like he was an honorable knight in a duel. He starts screaming out, how fucking dare you! acting righteous after you killed all those innocent people. He calms down. He looks back at some red wolves behind him. He says, you guys want to eat him, right? I don't need him, so go ahead, the wolves rush forward. They start tearing into the bloody corpse with glee and gusto, as our hero does the cool guys don't look at explosions bit. He starts walking toward a mound of dirt, then starts digging with his hands. This reveals his water bottles and backpack, taking off his bloody hoodie and throws it in the hole, he puts on a tracksuit jacket like he's from Russia and calls out to the system to go to floor one, he asks. Is it really over as the teleporter starts to activate? Returning to floor one, he sees the vigilante cause. He gets a little nervous walking by. 
I mean, he did just murder someone. They both give each other side eyes as they pass each other, but the guard looks away and just yawns. Waking into town, he's relieved that it's finally over. He just had to kill himself 5,000 times. We see the city in the background and no one's the wiser that Yu Su Han has been killed. The TV in the bar is talking about how the Floor 10 raid team suffered another defeat today. Our hero reiterates that no one knows the Flame Emperor is dead. Now the TV is saying that criticism is growing for the Sword Saint. A mug of beer is slammed on the table as the TV says, the Sword Saint refused to participate in the raid despite to being ranked one. We see our boy looking like me when I'm at the bar exclaiming that the terrible legend of Yusu Han is no more. He calls the bartender to get another pint of beer. Bringing out his beer, the bartender says, you're drinking like a fish, your hunt must have gone well. Our boy agrees that it went super well. The news station blares over the speaker even though all the hunters from rank 7 to rank 2 went out together to challenge the 10th floor. There are some that calm it a useless ranking system. As our boy is exuberant and laughing at the bar, taking a sip from his beer he calls out his status window. We see his name and rank and his two skills. Ah, uh, it tastes so sweet wiping the foam from his lips. Just looking at those precious skills even though he was hating on his first skill, he got a little ways back. He realizes that he doesn't have a combat skill. And then he comments, is this what they call human greed? Kim comments on how he's being shameless. No, not like the TV show Dingus. He then thinks about what's possible with his skills like IDK man fucking time travel. He says he could win the lottery. Even says he can sell the clearing methods for the flaws that haven't been discovered. This man would make Jeff Bezos jealous with his business ideas. He asks himself what he should do from here on out. As a man with a blue suit opens the door to the bar, he says one word, milk. If a man walked into the bar and the first word he says is milk while standing at the door, I'm leaving that man is not to be trifled with. Then the grey-haired man in the blue suit says to mix vodka sugar and warm milk into it. This man is a menace to society and should be stopped at all cost. He continues by saying that honey would be better than sugar. The worker says he is not a bartender, but the man said he'll pay him well for the service, and our boy said what a weird old man. The patrons of the restaurant start muttering amongst themselves, saying is that really him and why is he here? The man in the blue suit removes his hat as he sits down at the table, and the narrator says, during these times for the morale of the hunters, there is a public opinion that we need to cooperate with each other, as the man in the blue suit's face is plastered on the TV. This leaves the main character with a surprised look on his face. The news station asks where the sword saint is and what he is doing. Well, he's in the bar ordering milk and vodka like a psychopath. We find out his real name is Marcus Calambry. Back in the present, the main character came from. He had been gone for 11 years. The sword saint was the original number one hero before the flame emperor came along. Our hero says he should be the strongest in this time period. He starts thinking about what type of skills the saint might have, like actual combat skills. Then this dude remembers that he has this magic skill that allows him to take skills, like duh. The realization hits harder than Mike Tyson. Yes, the skill will copy once he's killed by the saint, even the skills of the current rank one. With the skill he got from the flame emperor, he can't even die. This does seem quite doable for him. We see social media post about the saint claiming he's from a rich family, and no one knows the skills he has. He also abandoned his wealth to join the tower and has a habit of talking to himself. Our hero asks, what? He can't seem to find any useful information on him, since he's shrouded in mystery. He wishes he was an attention whore like the Flame Emperor. The Sword Saint says, shut up, don't be so loud. This sends shivers down our boy's spine. The Saint continues his conversation with himself. What a weirdo. Talking to himself, he said, understand feelings. This confirms the rumor that he talks to himself a lot, Liel. Then our hero finds a post talking about a word that should never be said, in front of the Sword Saint. The panel shows the Sword Saint being approached by a group of hunters, with one of them calling out, Hey old man, this is a communal hunting ground, let's follow the rules. Okay, can't you see that we've already claimed this spot? Sword Saint begins polishing his sword, saying, That's odd, I've never heard of such a thing. One of the hunters points a finger at him and starts to laugh rudely, saying, Either it's time for some new hearing aids or you're just too full of yourself. He continues digging his own grave by saying that, I bet the grandchildren you left behind must also have shit personalities. This makes the sword saint stare daggers at the lot of them. He begins slicing into the group without a hint of mercy. Morale of that story is that if you want to live, 
don't talk about the Sword Saint's grandchildren. This piques our hero's interest, seeing as that he wants to die by him. The Sword Saint yells out silence. I'll take care of it, leave it alone, I can't drink my vodka because of you. I need to test this out. Slamming his hand on the table, he thanks the owner for the drink, exclaiming that it was good. He grabs his hat and walks out the bar as the waiter appreciates his compliment and bids him adieu. The bar gets silent as he's walking out the door. Then the people in the bar start talking finally after the sword saint left he was a mood killer. Our hero pays his tab so he can follow the sword saint out. The bell rings as he walks out and he surveys his surroundings to see where the number one hunter went. He starts looking around at all the people in the street questioning where the sword saint went off to. He was right behind the saint as he walked out the door so he couldn't have gone far. He sees the saint's trademark blue suit and blue hat through the throng of people. He is the only one dressed like that, so he's easy to find. Our hero starts to wonder about what type of skills that he might have. He gets excited at the thought since the Emperor had an EX skill, and the Sword Saint was the number one hero before the Flame Emperor came along. He wonders if his skill is an even bigger cheat than returning from death. Sweating in excitement about what the skill might be, he thinks to himself that he just needs a bit of luck. The Sword Saint abruptly stops and says, This place should be adequate. This puts a puzzled expression on our hero's face. The saint calls out to our boy to come on out, leaning his head from around the tree he's scared, since the ain't knew his exact position. The saint has a bored expression on his face as he waits. Our hero tries to bluff his way out, saying, Please excuse my rudeness, and that he only wants to ask a favor. This gets a chuckle out of the man, and shocks our hero. The saint says a favor, didn't you do a poor job following me on purpose so that I'd notice you? He then proceeds to say, why are you asking a favor from a common old man in such a scary manner? This confuses our hero as he thinks the old man misunderstood that he let him detect him on purpose. He comments on the fact that he has no weapons on his person either. But the sword saint is holding his sword as if he's about to attack. After all, our boy only tailed him and is bewildered at his reaction. The sword saint says our boy is an amazing actor, but that's expected from a first-class assassin. This surprises our hero even more since he's only an F rank. This makes him think great, I don't even have to insult his grandkids to be killed by him. Still reeling from the accusation, he tries to play dumb by saying, I don't follow what you are saying, man. The sword saint, how shrewd, acting even now. But you can't fool my eyes. Our boy says, please, Gramps, I'm asking because I don't really know. How do I look like a first-class assassin? I'm actually really proud of how normal I look. This angers the sword saint as he looks at his sword yelling, Shut your mouth. He continue, I have many skills and among them is a skill that can show me how many people one has murdered. This makes our boy realize he can see his, the one murder he has. He understands that people from this time period won't understand why he did it, since they didn't see what type of monster the flame emperor would have became. He bets the sword saint can see a one above his head. He says, I understand, Mr. Sword Saint. He tries to defend himself by explaining that him killing one person was for the greater good for the future. The sword saint starts taking off his fedora as our hero swears to God about his previous statement. The sword saint abruptly interrupted him saying you disgust me. He follows up by saying a devil like you that's killed countless people wants to bring up reason. I haven't lived a particularly honest life myself, but I haven't at least committed senseless murder like you. This blindsides our main character as he stutters out mass murder gramps in my entire life, the only one I have. The sword saint then points his sword at him, telling him to stop lying without shame. For the number of people you've killed that shows above your head is... 4,091. We see our boy holding a bloody knife, stating, I killed Yusuha once. He then realizes the number displays the number of times he killed himself. The sword saint tosses his hat aside and asks if our boy if the witch from the black dragon sent him. Our main character starts running away, thinking to himself that this isn't an issue of copying a skill or not. The old man asks him if he will answer him, and the crux of the matter is, since the old man has a skill to see how many people he's killed. Now no matter when he encounters him, the sword saint will try to kill him. We then see him running from the old man as he leaps behind him about to slash at his head, as he screams, I will kill you with my all you devil. The sword misses his neck by inches. He commends our boy for dodging his blade. Fearful of the situation, he thinks to himself, you daft fucking geezer. He then trips on a rock and falls back. He realizes he can't dodge it anymore, and the first time was luck. 
He can't dodge it again as the saint raises his blade above his head to deliver the final blow. The saint says, shut up. He starts saying, you want to interrogate this devil? As if someone is right next to him. He continues by saying, didn't I tell you I'll take care of it and stop interfering with everything I do? Our main character starts thinking to himself, it seems too much like a conversation to be schizophrenia. Is it a skill? No way he questions if it's telepathy, as we see little blue circles surround the saint with our boy commenting that he's heard rumors of skills like that existing. He asks himself if the saint is sharing his information about him with other people, that there's a murder that's killed 4,091 people, then he'd become a wanted man as a poster with his faces shown. He also says he'll be hunted by big-time guilds and bounty hunters until he's publicly executed on the first floor of the tower. The realization sets in, as you can see in his face, that he cannot let that happen. He says, I need to die right now before 24 hours pass. Our boy struggles to his feet while saying, old man, the saint is still talking to someone saying, don't bother. I've already made up my mind, even if you are my teacher. As the main character asks, are your grandchildren doing well? This grabs the saint's full attention. The main character continues by saying, I heard you're from a nice family up north and you know how things are with those kinds of families. The outside world is dangerous, you know. If people find out their grandpa is the sword saint, what do you think will happen? The sword saint swings his sword so fast that all you can see is a blue after image. And he looks like he's upside down. We then get a close-up shot of the protagonist's head, which is upside down, and he begins to say, has the moon always been upside down? His head is completely severed from his body and flying through the air. The only thing he can think is how beautiful that strike from the saint was and how he couldn't even see it. He wants to get to that level, and he wants to be like him. He says, I'm envious as he body falls backwards. He stretches his hand out to the sword saint as he walks away cleaning his sword, saying, I also want that strike. We then see him in the respawn area with the giant blue status window. It then flashes, saying, creating skill cards. Hell end up having the skills of two different number one ranked hunters. He pumps his fist, asking where the golden card. He sweats nervously, saying, I'll just pick the one like I did with the Flame Emperor. The realization sets in and you can see it on his face. As only silver and brown cards float around, he is shocked. The Sword Saint doesn't have a golden card. He is bewildered by this, that unlike the Flame Emperor, the Sword Saint made it to the number one ranked spot, without a single S-rank skill. He falls to his knees in disbelief. He tries to rationalize that there has to be an overpowered skill amongst the cards. Looking at the bronze cards, he says three shit-colored cards, then over to four silver cards. Ignoring the crappy ones, he talks like a gambler and says his chances are one in four. He says that kill count skill has got to be amongst those. He stretches his hand out to select one, and a blue glow shows up, hoping he gets a cheat. He pleads to fate, claiming I'll never ask for anything ever again, we will see how long that lasts. He swipes the card and brings it to his chest. He's hoping it's the skill behind the Sword Saint's success. He gets the notification that the skill selection was a success, that he's returning to the previous 24 hours. He gasps, awake in his bed. He grips his hand into a fist. He opens up his hunter window as we see someone on his bed with long red hair. We see that the skill he got is named Sword Throne Rank A+. Plus and it's a passive skill. He is slightly upset, it's not a cool, active skill, but he's happy nonetheless. It's still an A-rank skill, so he can't complain. He also can't tell what it does based off the name. He then wonders what's all that noise. He gives the side eye to the source of the notices. We hear a voice say, Gramps, I've told you before, you outside. If you want to train in the middle of the night, our boy sees a ghostly figure talking with his back turned. He a look of utter disgust on his face, all he can say is, huh.